Okay, so good afternoon. Um, I'd like to welcome you all, uh, the, the participants, to this webinar. My name is Joanne Scar, and I'm the Director of Studies for the University Foundation Programme in London. Um, we have 30 years of experience of sending students to very large number of high-ranking universities, including Queen Mary University of London. Before I pass over to Queen Mary, I'd like to show a brief video which tells you a little bit more about the University Foundation Programme. So I'm delighted to say that today we have Finn Brennan with us today from Queen Mary and he's going to head this webinar. If you have any questions at all, please type them into the chat box at the bottom and we will deal with them after Finn's presentation. OK, Finn, over to you. Thank you ever so much, Joanne, and hello to everybody joining us today. Um, it's great to be able to speak with you um, about Queen Mary University of London. Um, we've been working with David Game for a long time. Geographically, we're, we're quite close to where their teaching takes place in London. So in, in normal times, I'm often making the short trip down the road um, to their, their central London campus to meet with the students in centre and to meet with Joanne and other colleagues. Um, every year, we're delighted to welcome students who have studied on the UFP um, in their applications to come to study with us here at Queen Mary University of London. Um, the bulk of my presentation today is going to be talking about Queen Mary, so the different programmes that we offer, what we offer students in terms of accommodation, campus facilities, and some of those reasons why uh, so many students from across the globe do choose to come and study at Queen Mary. As Joanne mentioned, if you do have any questions, um, if you could pop them into the, the chat or the Q&A function, and then we can try and pick those up um, at the end of the presentation. Now, if you bear with me one second, I'm just going to share my screen so I can bring the presentation up. I trust you can all see that okay. Joanne, does that look okay to you? Yep, absolutely. Okay, excellent. So, as I mentioned, my name is Finn Braddon. I work at Queen Mary as the International Pathways Recruitment Manager. So, my job is working with lots of uh, foundation programmes, both we teach at Queen Mary and also external foundation programmes such as David Game, uh, the UFP programme is offered there to fully inform the students about their options following the completion of the UFP and all of the wide range of courses that they can progress on to at a university such as Queen Mary. 
just a little bit about Queen Mary's global profile. Um, we are a very, very international university. I'm sure you'll hear lots of other institutions say this to you as well. We are ranked in the top 20 in the world for our international outlook. So this is based on not just where our students are coming from, but also where our members of staff, our academics are coming from, and also where all of the research that we conduct is being cited and used across the world and the different international partnerships that we have. So if students do apply to study at Queen Mary, they are going to be applying for a, a truly international experience. In terms of rankings, uh, we're ranked 12th uh, in the UK and 110th in the world as per the latest Times Higher Education rankings. So obviously, as a Russell Group University, it is uh, quite a high ranking, quite an education um, academic institute. Um, I'm sure you're very aware the Russell Group top 24 universities across the UK. They are the research intensive um, institutions such as Queen Mary, um, other London partners, Kings, Leeds, uh, Liverpool, the big universities that you will be aware of. And I'm, I'm aware that the David Gain UFP does uh, allow students to apply to a, a great deal of these universities. I think, as mentioned in Joanne's opening video, 70% of UFP students are receiving offers from these top Brussels universities. Um, we always like to talk a little about research. Obviously, the students that will be coming to study with us, their primary concern is the education they're going to receive. Research excellence is important. Um, it allows us to attract the top academics in the relevant academic fields who do also undertake the teaching on the programme. But it also allows us to shape our bachelor's and master's degree programmes in a way that makes sure that students are getting the cutting edge educational experience, the latest thinking in that academic area that they should be seeking uh, from their university education. A little bit about where our students uh, come from. Um, we've got around 27,000 students in total coming from 162 different nationalities. So uh, just over a third of those are coming from overseas. And even amongst our UK student cohort, we are one of the most diverse universities in the country. In fact, we're the most diverse Russell Group University by educational background. So it is a university that uh, opens its arms to students regardless of their background as long as they are academically capable and curious to to really push themselves in the studies that they will be taking in terms of programs that we teach well our education is split across our three faculties so we teach in the faculty of humanities and social science in science and engineering and also uh, medicine and dentistry at arts and the london school of Within humanities and social sciences, we've got a number of different academic schools teaching business management, economics and finance, politics and international relations, English and drama, geography, history, languages, linguistics and film and law. So some really prestigious programmes on offer there, some very high ranking programmes too, uh, lots of choice. Within science and engineering, we teach across nearly the full spectrum. Um, so we're offering engineering, so aeronautical, mechanical engineering, material science, electrical engineering and computer science, maths, physics, and also biological and chemical sciences, which does include subjects such as uh, biomedical sciences for students who are maybe interested in postgrad medicine a little bit later on. And Barts and the London is our institute, which teaches our medicine programmes. We teach medicine not only uh, in the UK, uh, very competitive to come and study medicine in the UK, but we do also have a campus based out at Malta that students can also consider if they're looking for uh, medical studies. Subject areas, I've, I've mentioned quite a few of these previously. There really is a great uh, breadth of programmes that we're able to offer. Um, it's nearly always easier for me to say what we don't offer as opposed to what we do offer. So civil engineering isn't something we're able to teach. Um, that's probably the biggest one. We don't teach architecture either. Um, most other subject areas that I'm normally asked about, we do teach at Queen Mary. So a real uh, wide degree of choice for students um, to come and study with us. Now, just with reference to uh, the UFP, students will need to make sure that they're studying uh, the, the correct pathway, they're studying those correct subjects in order to make those applications to come and study at Queen Mary. Um, the way the UFP is designed, I'm sure that uh, Joanne will be able to give you more information about this, but we do look for specific subjects 
and we benchmark these against A-level subjects. So if you're looking on our website and you see that a programme needs a student to be taking, for instance, maths or, or physics or a particular subject, this would be reflected in the subjects that we would be looking students to study on their UFP as well. Um, but the staff at David Game are fantastic. So they will, of course, always advise the students on those correct uh, classes to be taking in order to allow them to progress onto their chosen uh, bachelor's degree at Queen Mary or elsewhere. Now, people often ask me what sets Queen Mary apart from, from other institutions, from other London institutions in particular. Uh, well, alongside that academic pedigree that we have, you know, the nine Nobel Pro Prize winners that we've had over the years, the, the research excellence, I really think that our location um, is a real fantastic attribute of the university. We're based in East London, just a couple of miles up the road from where uh, David Game is. In fact, I used to walk down. On it's nice. Um, we are a campus university, which is something that uh, very few other universities, especially in London, are able to offer. So you'll see from this slide here, uh, our primary Mile End campus, which is where the vast majority of our undergraduate teaching takes place, encompasses everything. We've got student accommodation in the student village there, uh, the students union with all the clubs and the societies, uh, shops, cafes, sports facilities, obviously the educational facilities, lecture theatres, seminar rooms, libraries, everything is all together in one place. This really allows students to make the full advantage of the community that we have there, that student focused atmosphere that we have on campus, whilst at the same time being, you know, a couple of tube stop rides away from being in the centre of London. It, it really is the best of both worlds. Um, very uh, relaxed atmosphere on campus, although we're just off the Mile End Road, which is one of the, the major arteries out of London. It is a, a very calm, relaxing place to be, um, a really good uh, environment in which students can knuckle down, uh, get on with their studies, but also uh, enjoy that atmosphere of being around other students. In terms of uh, our location, if it wasn't quite clear from that last slide, you'll, you'll see on this one, uh, this is a sort of a map of central London. Um, we are based um, on the right hand side of the street, so next to Mile End uh, Tube Station. That's our, our main campus, if you like, where most of the undergraduate teaching takes place. Our medicine and dentistry is taught at Whitechapel, so you can see that is slightly further left or west on that map there. But we are right next to a couple of very well connected underground stations. So typically within about 10 or 15 minutes, it's very easy to get to central London or indeed if students are choosing to stay further uh, out from the university, it is very accessible. Um, so it is a really easy place to get to. Um, East London itself is a very exciting part of the city to be in. It's very young, it's very diverse. There are lots of exciting things going on um, around Brick Lane, lots of independent shops, food markets, um, different markets, street markets that pop up at the weekend. Um, close to Shoreditch, again, another very young, uh, fun area to be in. Lots of our students do absolutely adore that part of London, being able to get out from the safety and uh, security of the campus and really throw themselves into London life to experience everything that we know international students want to soak up whilst they're studying with us. And just for one further last reference, you can see uh, on the tube map, you may be very familiar with this, we are based at number one there, so east of the city uh, near to um, Mile End. In terms of campus facilities, um, I covered a little bit of it before. We have spent a lot of money on the campus over the past few years, more than 100 million has been spent on upgrading study facilities. So that includes our £40 million graduate centre, uh, nearly £80 million spent on the dentistry building. Um, lots of money has been invested to make sure that students do have top tier facilities, um, not just in terms of the, their, their classes, uh, lecture theatres, but also things like new accommodation, uh, study spaces, uh, the Students' Union, our award winning student village. It really is uh, a fantastic facility. If students want to see a little bit more of this, uh, we do have online campus tours available. So students can log in and get a, a virtual reality experience walking around uh, our campus. I really would encourage any interested students to, uh, to make, make good use of this. Really helps to give a taste 
of what it's like to be studying on our campus at the time, obviously uh, during COVID when we can't welcome too many students in person. So alongside uh, the, the buildings, uh, the hard facilities I've talked about, we do offer another uh, range of services uh, to students. Um, we take the, the mental and health well-being of our students very seriously as well as their studies. Um, so we have a health centre on campus. We've also got um, our student advice and counselling centre able to offer advice right from the point of them applying for their visa to study with us all the way through to anything that they need help or guidance with until they graduate. We've got an award-winning career centre um, which work with students not just whilst they're studying but up for up to two years afterwards as well. So for two years after graduation our students, our graduates can use uh, our career centre. We get lots of employers coming onto campus, obviously being a Russell Group University, our students are highly sought after. So lots of job fairs, uh, graduate schemes come to work with us. Students are also able to do uh, summer placements, work internships, and on some of our courses, they're even able to do years in industry. So this is where you spend a year working as part of your programme. So students aren't, aren't just getting that fantastic academic experience. We are taking uh, great care to make sure that they are linked into the job world so that when they graduate from us, they have lots of opportunities available to them. Student Union, um, really core to uh, student life on campus. Um, they are the students' representatives, so they're made up from elected students and they run all of the different societies and clubs that we have on our campus. They also run uh, our gym, lots of the campus shops, restaurants, uh, social activities. And in terms of what they have available, it really is uh, kind of all encompassing, more than 200 different societies, more than 100 different sports clubs, really anything that a student could want to uh, be interested in extracurricularly is available. Um, so whether that's, you know, a particular type of sport, it's football or hockey or cricket that they're interested in, or maybe it's just that they want to try something new when they come to university. Uh, we've got different religious societies, fashion, dance, uh, cultural societies. There really are so many opportunities for students to get involved with the Students' Union when they register with us. Um, a popular uh, subject is always the accommodation that we have. Um, we do guarantee accommodation for all first year international students. Um, so that's another real core part of, of being at Queen Mary. Uh, that's very likely to be in our student village, so the on-campus accommodation. So really a very, very short walk from their accommodation to where their le uh, lessons take place. Prices do range from 130 to 205 pounds a week. So there is a uh, a range of different options available to suit different budgets. Um, students can get meal plans. Options include having ensuite bathrooms. Generally, students live in a small apartment with a, a few other students, between four and five students in total in an apartment. It is important to point out that we do separate out our undergraduate from our postgraduate students. So uh, it's likely that the students will be staying with other 18, 19 year olds um, in, in that first year. Um, and that we do mix the students in uh, irregardless of their subject background. So you will have medicine students living with law students, living with business students, likewise home and international students all mixed in together. So a fantastic facility and a really nice way for the students to widen their circle uh, of friends outside of just those on their course. So I mentioned a little bit before about our career centre. While students are studying with us, there are a number of different services that they can also use. These are very, very popular. And we do find the students who engage with our career service are the ones who are able to secure those top graduate positions when they graduate. Um, I mentioned before that we have lots of events on campus. So employers actively coming onto campus to meet our students, to tell them about the graduate schemes that are available. Uh, we run different uh, classes, different sessions to help students with their CV writing practice, with interview practice, really helping them to prepare as best as they can for the world of work. And our success is really in where we have been able to send our students. So over the past couple of years, uh, for example, some of our management graduates have gone on to work for Bloomberg, the, the civil service, they've gone to work for Amazon. Accounting graduates going to work on all of the big four, so EY, Deloitte, uh, KPMG, and PWC. So I'm 
Chanel, revenue on customs. Marketing, likewise, students going to Facebook, going to Shell, going to GM, they really are securing position in those top companies. So it is something that we take um, very seriously. We're able to add a lot to the student experience in that regard. One thing I just want to touch on briefly, um, and this would be something that you could get more information from my colleagues at David Game, is about the, uh, about the admissions process. Um, so applications to uh, Queen Mary would need to be submitted through you they would get great help and guidance on doing this by the time they begin when they're registered on the program. Um, the university does look at a number of factors when deciding if they're going to make an offer or not. We look at their predicted grades from the UFP, we look at the references they've been provided, and we look at their personal statement as well. These are generally the, the, the three things we really look to in determining whether or not to make an offer to a student. Now, as a university, we're very comfortable with the uh, curriculum being offered by uh, the, the UFP at David Games. We make many offers to these students every year. It's just always good to encourage those students to engage as much as possible with, with David Games to make sure that they're making suitable and appropriate choices on that UCAS application. Entry requirements do vary from course to course. So some of our more competitive courses are looking up in the A's. Uh, we go down to as low as probably three B's in the UFP grade. And just mention again, just to make sure that the right subjects are being studied. In terms of tuition fees, these do vary between our various programs. As a general rule of thumb, uh, a classroom based program will be less expensive than uh, a lab based program. So something like English language or linguistics would fall into the 19,250 bracket. Something in science and engineering is likely to be a little bit more expensive, 23, 24,000 pounds. The references to the 40,000 and the 53,000 pounds there, that is for some of our more specialized medicine programs. So the vast majority of our programs are falling at the lower range, end of the range that you can see there. You can look up the individual tuition fees for all of our programs by going onto the Queen Mary course finder. You'll see an example there on the screen. We give all of the key information about the programs. It is always important to check this uh, detail on a yearly basis because things are liable to change. So students need to be checking that. Um, now, it's all very well, me uh, coming into a session like this and telling you how wonderful Queen Mary is. It is a wonderful university. Uh, but we always like to encourage students to reach out to our student ambassadors as well. Our student ambassadors live and breathe the life of a Queen Mary student. So they really are a fantastic resource and can give that student focused uh, experience of what it's been like for them being an international student at Queen Mary. Uh, we've got a number of ambassadors available over a wide range of programs and from a wide range of different countries. So if you do have students who are interested in what it's like to be a student at Queen Mary, please do encourage them to use the UniBuddy service that's available on our website, uh, qmul.ac.uk forward slash UniBuddy. Uh, they really are fantastic. Uh, I'd encourage students to get in touch with them uh, as much as they possibly can. So that just about covers everything that I wanted to go through in terms of a formal presentation. I'm more than happy to take um, any questions that we might have from any of the participants who are with us, any questions about Queen Mary. And I'm sure Joanne will be able to help with anything regarding uh, David Gaines. There were just a couple of points that, that you raised that I was going to, to add to, um, Finn. One was you were saying how we will be able to guide students about their choice of major modules. And that's to say that on the foundation programme, all students take the minor modules, which are compulsory, which are mathematics, IT, and then either communication skills or IELTS. And then students choose three major modules and absolutely as you said, Finn, we will advise the students about which majors to take based on specific subjects that they're aiming for at university. Um, the other thing I was going to add to was that you also mentioned Queen Mary uh, offering medicine in Malta. Um, and I'm delighted to say that students who um, successfully complete the foundation, the university foundation program for medicine with the necessary um, grades are um, accepted by Queen Mary 
for medicine in Malta now. Um, we'll be having more uh, webinars and information about that course um, later next month, I believe. All of that can be found in our events page. Um, and the, the third thing that you mentioned that I thought I could just add to was that all foundation students apply to universities and Queen Mary through UCAS. And a large part of my job is to help the students with those applications, um, helping with their personal statements, helping with choosing the right um, subject at university. And when we don't have a global pandemic, we have a, an open um, university fair where we invite universities such as Queen Mary to our college and you can meet people just like Finn face to face ask them questions so that we're not in a, a Zoom situation, but we're in a real room all together. And absolutely, we're hoping that that can be repeated really soon, as soon as uh, as soon as um, the the limitations are lifted again. Um, they were the points that, that I, I'd noticed that uh, that maybe we could add to. Um, if there are any other questions from from the participants, please do put them into the chat box. Just to say, if um, if there are no further questions, but you do think of something later on, then you know I'm always happy to uh, happy to hear from anybody who wants to learn more about Queen Mary. Obviously, colleagues at David Game have been working with them for many, many, many. Years, so they can also give you lots of guidance about progression applying to Queen Mary as well. But I'll um, I'll put my email address into the chat function so that if anybody does want to send me an email directly, they can choose to do so. Perfect. I think possibly Anna would be able to um, put in the the admissions and queries email address uh, for the foundation program as well. And um, we, she, you, I can see in the uh, chat box that um, my colleague Anna has put in the link to the online events that we are running. Um, there will be a, a special event, as I said, for the medicine in Malta with Queen Mary. Um, and we've also got some other um, sessions coming up next week that are all listed there, a few weeks to come, that you would be very welcome to come and join as well. Um, I think, possibly, if there are well, no maybe, questions. Maybe we did, just did such a fantastic job in our presentation. There we go. We've answered all of the possible questions that there were. Um, yeah, please do make a note of, of both our email address, the admissions email, and also Finn's email address there. And we are more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, so I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I hope that this webinar has been of use to you and of interest. And uh, yeah, please join us again soon. Thanks very much. Thanks Thank very you. much, Finn. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Anna. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.